Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at solving quadratic equations by substitution. They are a little bit tricky, around about grade 8 GCSE. Uh, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solution. If you do need any help, please do add a comment below in the comments. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, this is the second video in the playlist where we're looking at solving simultaneous equations by substitution. So in this particular one, we've got again the equation of a straight line, which is the one at the top, and the, the equation of a circle. So by changing this value of the straight line, I can actually move this around slightly and say, well, actually, if this is true, then x must equal 1 plus 2y. So all I've done is I've taken the minus 2y and added 2y to both sides. So x now equals 1 plus 2y. And then really it's a case of taking that value of x and substituting it straight into this equation. So the equation starts as x squared plus y squared equals 13, but rather than writing x, I'm going to write this value. So 1 plus 2y squared plus y squared equals 13. And then really it's a case of expanding this and figuring out the value of y and then substituting it to get the value of x or substituting it back into here to get the value of x once we've got the value of y. So at the moment, I'm feeling OK about it because it just says solve. So in this particular one, I don't think we're going to be using quadratic formula or completing the square. Hopefully we should be able to just solve this directly by factorising, but we'll expand it see what happens. So if I expand that, I'm going to get 1 plus 2y times 1 plus 2y plus y squared equals 13. Well, that's going to give me 1 plus 4y um, plus 4y squared plus y squared equals 13. Now, if you're not sure about how I've done that and how I've expanded that to that, then please do have a look at some of the other playlists on expanding quadratics, and that will give you a little bit more of um, um, an idea about those sorts of things. OK, so what we're going to do now is gather the like terms, and I've got 5y squared... Um, OK, so I've got 4y there, plus 4y, and I've got 13. Bring it over, so it's going to be 1 minus 13 is going to give me minus 12 equals 0. OK, now, on the surface of it, that doesn't look particularly easy to factorise. You could, if you wanted to, substitute it into a quadratic formula, or if you're feeling like you want to, you could do completing the square, although that might be quite difficult. But I'm going to show you the method I use to factorise these sorts of things, where I say, well, 5 times minus 12 is minus 60, and I want two numbers that, when I multiply them together, make minus 60, and when I add them together, make positive 4. So I'm going to choose um, plus 10 and minus 6. So those two multiply together, make minus 60, and added together, make positive 4. So I can now rewrite this as 5y squared plus 10y minus 6y minus 12 equals 0. Now, the reason I've done that, it's actually no different to this. It's still plus 10y minus 6y is still plus 4y, but it allows me then to factorise the first two terms and the second two terms and look for a common factor. So if I factorise these two terms by 5y, I get y plus 2. If I factorise these two terms by minus 6, guess what? I get y plus 2 equals 0. OK, so now I've got this equation where I've got these two common bracketed terms. So I can write this now as 5y minus 6 multiplied by y plus 2 
equals zero. And then really the values of y are going to be y plus two equals zero, so therefore y equals minus two. And then I've got 5y minus 6 equals 0, so 5y equals 6, so y must equal 6 over 5, okay? If you prefer, you can change that to, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, a decimal of 1.2. doesn't really matter. Um, I tend to prefer to work with fractions, but I'm very conscious other people prefer decimals, and that's absolutely fine. Okay, so let's have a look then at figuring out these values um, for x. Now, you remember that we said that x equals 1 plus 2y. So... When y equals 6 over 5, I can then just put that straight in this equation and work out the value of x. So when? So x equals 1 plus 2 times 6 over 5. OK, so that's going to be x equals. This might be a little bit tricky. It's going to be 1 plus 12 over 5, okay, right, well, 1 is the same as saying 12 twelfths, okay, so I can say that x equals 17 over 5, or if you prefer, we'll write that as uh, 3 and 2 fifths, okay, or if you prefer 3.4. Again, as I mentioned, I don't mind whichever suits you is perfectly fine. OK, so let's have a look at when y equals minus 2. Well, that might be a little bit more straightforward. We've got y equals 1 plus 2 times minus 2. So y equals 1 and plus 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. So y must equal minus 3. OK. <laughs> Sorry, x. <laughs> x equals. X equals. <laughs> and x equals. OK, sorry about that. OK, when y equals minus 2, x equals 1 plus 2y. Get there eventually. OK, so let's have a look at how we would answer the question. I would personally write it as when x is 17 over 5, y is going to be 6 over 5, OK? Or you could write it, if you prefer, as 3.4 and 1.2, OK? So that would be fine for that point of intersection. The other one is fairly, a bit more straightforward. x is minus 3, y is minus 2. OK, sorry about the error there. They're all equal to x. OK, I hope that's been all right for you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll I'll always come back to you and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.